Hey guys, uh, just want to do a little review of, uh, two, the two new, uh, Ratchet and Clank games, uh, that have come out over the past couple of years, and not the side one, it's like, uh, Ratchet and Clank Size Matters, which I've played, and that was a really good game, or, uh, Secret Agent Clank, which I haven't played yet, I keep hearing good things about it, anyway, let's start off with Ratchet and Clank, Future Tools of the which was uh, Insomniac's first attempt at a Ratchet and Clank game on the PlayStation 3. Now, this game is good, but it's not as good as Up Your Arsenal or even the original Ratchet and Clank game. The original Ratchet and Clank game really gave uh, the PlayStation 2 an exclusive to say, Hey, uh, they got Halo? Well, we got some really solid... 3D platforming games with Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonist, Ratchet and Clank, uh, Jack and Daxter, which I'm not a big fan of Jack and Daxter in general, but uh, it was definitely a game worth taking note of. Anyway, talk about future tools of destruction. I don't know about you, but uh, Ratchet and Clank, uh, tools of destruction, feels like, you know, by the books kind of, you know, gameplay for the series. Like, yeah, we uh, had new levels and this and that, and new weapons, like the Groove Tron, which is basically a giant disco ball that makes everybody immobilized for a while. But, uh, when you think about it, the main kind of gameplay, it feels by the numbers, let's not take any chances, let's not take any risks. Excuse me. But, yeah. It feels like I've been here before. I've done this before. Kind of deal. The graphics look fairly well done. It looks like a top-notch game, but you even look back at a uh, you know up your arsenal or I'm trying to think of the other one, Deadlocked. All those look really solid, and the just the art style will hold up to test the time aim because you look at something like a first person shooter you look at Halo uh, now you look at the graphics on that and you're like man this looks really freaking dated <laughs> but it's backed up by really just solid game play which Ratchet and Clank has and I think all those games have created like okay here's like basically a template for you know, good platforming, uh, good controls, that sort of thing, which I kind of wish uh, some people would learn, learn like uh, the guys who made Bullet Witch, which had you do it in the hit heat of combat, but uh, I digress. The, the audio, you know, it's, everything about this game feels really just par for the course for a Ratchet and Clank game. Uh, there's a bunch of sh space shooter levels that feel like they're, l they're done somewhat like the original Ratchet and Clank game, which it's not a bad thing. None of these things I'm saying are bad. The game's very humorous, very funny. Game, game, uh, the game plays well. It's got good controls. It's got good level design. I like the Clank levels. I don't like them as much as, you know, Up Your Arsenal or even the original Ratchet and Clank, which in the original Ratchet and Clank, it felt really unique back in the day. Everyone around as this tiny little guy, you know, and you're facing off against monsters that are like two or three times your size, and you're doing all these really, uh, not exactly tough puzzle solving things, but that are uh, really well designed puzzles and platforms, that kind of thing, which Tools of Destruction, again, does. It feels like, you know, they took the template that they set out with the original Ratchet and & Clank, and they said, let's put this on the PlayStation 3, let's change up the storyline, which, and again, there's a big cliffhanger, which leads into a crack in time, um, which I kind of like, you know, oh, I was, uh, 
really hoping, you know, they kept going on with this series. Like, Ratchet & Clank is a great franchise. It has not had a bad game in the franchise. It's like, the other games, like, right, the original one I would give a 9.5. The second one I would give an 8. The third one I would give a 9. Deadlock, 7.5. But this one, I think it's very much par for the course. I keep referencing the older games here, but uh, that's what it kept reminding me of. It reminded me of the glory days, Ratchet like which is a plus, yet at the same time, it kind of feels like been there, done that. So it's a kind of double-edged sword here. Well, anyway... Uh, overall, to the destruction, uh, this was definitely worth the 20 bucks I picked this up for. This is a great game. If you own a PlayStation 3, uh, and you're into platforming kind of games, you should definitely check this one out. Uh, it's fundamentally a great game, top to bottom, beginning to end. There's lots of replay value, collecting golden boats, collecting all the extra stuff in the game, getting all the skill points, but there's no trophy support. This came out before there was trophy support for the game, which, depending on who you are, may be a deal breaker, but still, it's definitely worth checking out. I'm going to give Ratchet and Clank Future Tools of Destruction an 8 out of 10. Moving on from one great platforming game to another, we have Ratchet and Clank Kraken Time. Now, this game here, for the first time ever, you don't get to play as both Ratchet and Clank at the start of the game. You start off playing as Clank, you know, doing this very kind of tutorial, you know, get your feet wet kind of in the platforming stage as Clank because I had a ton of fun with Clank level designs. There are very challenging levels, and again, it looks beautiful. Uh, the level designs are all great. The graphics look incredible. Like, this game's two years old, and still doesn't look dated. Like, it feels kind of glossed up when you look at, you know, games like uh, even Tools of Destruction. You know, that game kind of felt like a gloss-up version. It felt like an up res version. But this game felt like a, I don't know, a, like a, you know, tinkering and tweaking kind of feel. Like, this game, I think it came out two years after Tools of Destruction. But still, it looks incredible. Like, they took the fundamentals of, you know, great low design. Like, if you're going to learn from anybody how to make a good platforming game that's going to last the test of time, go look at the Ratchet and Clank games. Any one of them except for Deadlock, because Deadlock is more of an arena combat kind of game. But still, they took some risks with the, you know, the Clank load design kind of deal. It reminds me a lot of a game... Uh, I don't know if a lot of people have heard of it or even played it, called The Misadventures of P.B. Winterbottom, which uh, had this record play kind of deal, and you can create clones of yourself, but uh, they, but you would have to program it out, you know, every action you want each character to do. And once all the characters, you know, do their separate thing, you go... Th through the door to move on to the next level. That kind of gameplay I actually fairly much enjoyed. Too bad I had to bypass most of it because uh, I couldn't figure it out for the life of me, especially the last one. Me and my brother went out of it, went out for about a good hour before we're like, fuck it, let's just bypass it. Which, that's another cool 
feature about those levels if you are just stumped and these levels are driving you nuts you can just bypass them you just won't get the bullets uh, they will give you for uh, being that level uh, as for the ratchet levels it again it feels par for course I think if this if the ratchet levels were pretty much the entirety of the game, I would have said uh, they definitely took a step back. So, according to the storyline of the game, this is supposed to be the last one. They're, they're in development for another Ratchet and Clank game, which I'm very excited about. I've always loved the Ratchet and Clank games, especially Ratchet and Clank Up Your Arsenal, which was an incredible game. I loved Ratchet and Clank up your arsenal, especially online, even though I got my ass handed to me every single time I jumped on. But, hey, uh, what can you do? Uh, there are some elements in the game where, you know, Captain Quark is running around shooting. I wish they could have made that cooperative. They try to work in the six axes control thing, like uh, tools of destruction with some of the weapons. But uh, it doesn't really work out. You end up, you know, just shooting. I think there's a weapon in the game. It's a big old gear. It shocks everything in its path. The it, If you try to control it, more likely than not, you'll get hit half the time. But uh, it's nice that they want to incorporate that in there. It's just that it didn't work out. Six axes, six axes did not work out. Uh, if you don't believe me, go play Lair. Uh, go try flying around in Warhawk. Like, get a bunch of buddies, play Warhawk, try flying around in that, and I'll tell you straight up, it didn't really work. But anyway, uh, the game, much like Tours of Destruction, is not exactly a long game. It's about 8 to 10 hours. But it's a little bit longer than uh, Quest for Booty, which I haven't even played yet. I, which I can, I kind of want to play Quest for Booty, but at the same time, I'm like, eh, I don't want to, you know, fill the gap between the two games. Which, at the start of the game, it fills gap. Which, if you had not played Ratchet and Clank uh, Quest for Booty, basically they find out where the location is of uh, Clank is. I'm trying not to give away a lot of the story because it is a very compelling kind of story. Like, it still has those humor elements in it, but the storyline takes a very, has a very serious edge to it. Ratchet could save uh, the whole long vaccination if he went to uh, the clock of time, which Clank is, and Clanks find out stuff about where he originated from and so forth. Dr. Nefarious, which I would say he's probably the strongest bad guy that they had in all these games. I didn't really like, you know, uh, Blarg. I didn't like, uh, I forgot his name from Tools of Destruction. But, uh, it's a very compelling plot, very compelling considering that, you know, this is supposed to be a mindless, you know, shooting game. My biggest issue is that some of the boss battles, you know, especially near the end, they give you a weapon called the Groovatron that has everybody stop, and they got, like, this funky beat. It kind of takes away how serious the thing, the event is. Like, it's kind of a broken weapon using it, but it takes away from the seriousness of it. But I don't think the guys who made Ratchet and Clank ever intended on you to take the game very seriously. But even still, Ratchet and Clank Future Tools of Destruction is a lot of fun. Uh, you can compare your stats to other players online, number of times you got killed, which I think I got killed 120 times times, at least 10 or 20 times, fighting nefarious, and at least 10 or 
10 to 30 times fighting the final boss. But, it, like, you can compare stats and everything. But still, I would definitely highly recommend you check out Ratchet and Clank Future. Ah, I screwed up there. Ratchet and Clank A Crack in Time. It is definitely a much better game than Tools of Destruction. I had a lot more fun than I had with Tools of Destruction. Just because of the level design on the Clank levels. And overall, I think it's a better made game. I would put this above Size Matter. It would be tied with Size Matters. I liked this more than Deadlocked. I liked it more than Going Commando. But I did not like this as much as the original or uh, up your arsenal because I have so many good memories with those games. Overall, I would give this an 8.5 out of 10.